Let's do something, Hinari. <laughs> It's our second to last video in this Cook Island series and we wanted to mix things up a little. In our 12 top things to do in Rarotonga video, we shared some of the best things to do. This is island life after all, so laxing and amazing accommodation, exploring the island, snorkeling, visiting the night markets, tasting the food and touring the lagoon are all must, but that's not it. Rarotonga has some lesser known and more cultural experiences too. So for this video, we hunted out three unique tours to show a different side to the island. We're taking you to meet three local families. I'm careful. I'm the biggest boss of this home. <laughs> James Bond style diving underwater to see turtles and cruising at sunset with fire. Yeah, that's good. So this one's going to be awesome. I'm about to do a sea scooter turtle tour. So that's out on the lagoon with those James Bond like sea scooters. You can dive under the water. There's three different speeds you get down and the two kinds of the two species of turtles that they have here in Rarotonga. Fish, rays, all of that jazz. I'm out there seeing it. The thing is early start. It's obviously tidal based and everything. I had to get up at six. So you can get here. It's almost seven o'clock. So this is where we're going to be doing it. You can see out through there, the color of the water changes. That's the sort of channel that I think all the turtles hang out in. But then because we've got the guides, obviously we've got the safety of them looking after us, but also the, um, the sea scooters, we, can, we don't have any problems going in and out, boosting up and down through there. So we've got to pick these up and we're on our way. We've already shown how epic the snorkeling is around Rarotonga and you can get out and see a lot of that yourself for free but this Ariki Adventures Sea Scooter Safari was my personal highlight of the entire trip. It's the best of everything in one because the sea scooters make it way less work than snorkeling. You can deep dive way down which I love and you can cover so much more distance in a shorter time. Like most tours, it starts slowly with the standard safety chats. I have got some um, life jackets here, so if you need a little bit more buoyancy. And practicing the sea scooter controls before heading out deeper into the lagoon. Instantly, you're surrounded by fish. Then cruising around right at the bottom in the darkest, deepest spot, we saw a group of rays cruising along together. And then within a few minutes, we'd already spotted the first turtle and he was just chilling on the bottom as well. I was amped right off the bat and I wanted to duck dive down and get up close and go have a look at this guy. And the crew just kind of pointed and kept moving. And I quickly realized why. That's because that was the first of maybe 15 to 20 turtles we were gonna spot. And there was no reason to go crazy because there was so much more time and so many more we'd get closer to. There's a real calm to just gliding through the water with the only sound that you can hear coming from the electric scooters. And maybe you'll get this, but maybe you won't. For me personally, there's something almost emotional or humbling or, or spiritual maybe about seeing turtles in the wild. So I could have stayed out there all day long. Cruising around to restaurants, shops and markets is a fun way to chat with the people of the island and try some food. But it still doesn't really show the true lifestyle of the Cook Islands. So we went on a progressive dinner tour as a way to leave the resort life behind, visit some local villages and genuinely experience life through a local's eyes. And better yet, taste their home cooking. I really love this tour and getting to meet three different families and being welcomed into their homes. What is that? Oh, it's good. <laughs> we met such beautiful and welcoming families, sitting down to hear their stories, learn their culture and see their arts. We would set our material, just put the pattern on, anywhere, I mean any style, and then you spray paint on a beautiful day, spray paint, and then just hang it in the sun, that's it. And of course, the food. So this is our ikamata. I marinate it with lemon, but firstly with seawater. 
And this is the taro I was talking about, the one I planted and harvested. And then we have the popo salad, we have the maniota uh, arirut, and we have the banana salad over here. It's really something seeing people in their element. Stace is loving, well I wasn't meaning Stace and the dogs. <laughs> Milo's trying to eat my I was just meaning, just seeing these these ladies here, just like working so hard, and she's harvesting all of the all of the taro, all of the coconuts by herself. Husband passed away, but this is something that she does to kind of keep the culture and the. It's just crazy. You've got the sun setting in the background. We're sitting here with our ikamata, our taro, our was it arrowroot, arrowroot, and arrowroot as well, and just getting to see what life is really like, yeah. really like, not the resort lifestyle. The real life. It's all about for the these people locals. and the local food. Yeah, it is. And always somebody on the ukulele jamming away. This is Radio Cook Island broadcasting from <laughs> <laughs> no one knows how to <laughs> With one of the three meals down, it was on to the next house to meet the sweetest host. Welcome especially to our home. We are so glad that you are able to come to our home and be a family to us tonight. And we hope that you enjoy your time with us, eating your main course here with us. I'm Kafo. I'm the biggest boss of this home. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he <laughs> start remembering and complaining. It's customary in the islands of the Pacific, whatever we do, we start with a little prayer. And I know you won't mind. I won't pray long. I just say a grace for our food so we can eat. Kumara and taro, octopus, stir fry, so many chicken dishes and all sorts of coconut treats as well. The last stop was a buffet of desserts. Firstly, kia ora ana, everybody. Kia ora. Oh, I can't hear you. Kia ora. Ah, that's better. That's better. Uh, welcome and welcome to our home. Hey boss lady, hurry up. <laughs> Some Kiwi favourites like pavlova, a bunch of island cakes, ice creams, fruit and coffee. And there's never a ukulele far away. Hopefully you can tell from watching just how special this night was. It's rare to get the opportunity to really see how life is in destinations like Rarotonga that are known for the resort lifestyle. And I really loved meeting all of these amazing people. The next thing we're doing by itself is not necessarily all that unique. Stand up paddle boarding, which is very common out here on the lagoon because of the nice conditions. But this one is on a nighttime fire show tour with Kites Up. And the reason it is different is obviously it's the nighttime element. But apparently, from what we've been told, their stand up paddle boards have LED lights on the underside. So not only do you, oh, there we go, perfect timing. There's a couple of dudes out there right now. So not only do you get to go out and as you're paddling and you get to see the sunset, then there's LED lights so you can kind of see everything that's going on underneath you at the same time once you've caught sunset and all that. And then I think we go and park up onto an island and there's a fire show and all sorts. So just a little bit different, definitely more unique than the typical just grab a paddleboard and go for a bit of a wander. Might have been raining but we've got some beautiful conditions for it. Bit of tropical rain never hurt anybody. Well, it seems like it's hurt everybody else who was on the beach. Everyone's left. But we've got our sups out with the lights on underneath. You should be able to see them soon when it gets dark. Rainbow in. Oh, it's a beautiful still night. This is going to be awesome. Oh, that's why no one took that one. <laughs> We've already mentioned in other videos, but Raro has such a nice and calm lagoon. It makes these kind of tours absolutely perfect. You don't need to be an expert paddleboarder either. 
For most people it was their first time, so it was fairly chill. With a few casualties obviously, but at least it's warm. Oh no. Man down. Oh no. It's alright, it's very chill, like it's such a slow, calm pace. I'm really liking it. There's no stress, no panic. It's quite cool because if you're not into the whole paddle boarding thing or you're not sure about it, they also have kayaks as well, which is what I'm in because we have a lot of camera gear, so one of us needed to be in it. But it's actually a really nice kayak. It's real leisurely because the, um, the paddle boarders are just learning what to do. And it's just such a nice kind of leisurely pace. You don't have to worry about falling out. <laughs> it's, actually like, it's actually a very cruisy way of doing it. Uh, it looks fun, eh? It's super fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, I enjoyed that. That's my first proper stand-up paddle boarding session, so I would say. Well. Now we get to do the fire show. For you guys that don't know, this is Koro Midi. So this is one of four motus that we have here in uh, Rarotonga. Uh, the motu over there is called Ta'a Koka. Going hunting for coconut crabs. I actually didn't know that this was part of the tour, did you? No, I didn't actually. Our oh, mate Pete up there has got the torch. He said for us to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> These things are going to be huge to find them. There's stuff like this. It's like in a tree with a, a hole like that. Oh, okay. Because they like to climb up and chill inside one of those. Okay. All right. Okay. And then sometimes they'll crawl up into the tree. This one's empty. Oh. So this is probably. Where's your GoPro? Is it oh, I'll say it's probably like 20 times smaller than a coconut crab. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> so we're basically looking yeah. for cats and dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But these fellas. They've got quite big nippers. Oh, this guy's pretty new. I think he just found the shell. This is a prime racer we got here. <laughs> Come on, buddy. We got a race to win. I think we should call him Henry. Henry the crab? Henry the hermit? Henry the hermit crab. <laughs> so what is your bet, Super Cash? <laughs> is it a race oh, to the yeah, outside? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. 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 That's here I am. Do something, Hinari. Oh, God, he's <laughs> Wait, oh, look at him. Oh, look at that one, then. Got him, Mimic. Alright. Yeah. It's a little bit hot. Like I had hard my hair off. Did we forget to mention that I was actually part of the fire show? Mm, yeah, not really. <laughs> I mean, that alone feels cool, so I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you see you now? Yeah, wait, it's just like the boats on the motor. <laughs> and then we cruised back in the dark with our LED lights shining in front of us. Really cool, random, unique experience with so many different elements all in one. But there you have it, that's three unique things to do in Rarotonga, three things that we really loved. And we're almost at the end of this Cook Island series. We've got one last video with a ridiculously early start. Maybe we're crazy doing that on our final day, but getting up before the sunrise to climb a mountain in the dark, using ropes to catch our final sunrise in the Cook Islands, I think it's gonna be worth it. And then we go into the Punanga Nui markets, the weekend only special markets to visit before finishing up this whole Cook Island series with a sun set this time at the best restaurant in Rarotonga.